The gripping saga of Marcus Garvey's turbulent years, 1922-1923. Step into the world of intrigue as Garvey faces charges that shake the very foundation of his movement. Arrested for mail fraud, he stands at a crossroads, battling not just the law but also rival factions within the African-American community. As accusations fly, Garvey's defiant voice rises, challenging perceptions and igniting controversy. Witness the clash of ideals as Garvey's meeting with the Ku Klux Klan sparks outrage and divides opinion. Amidst the turmoil, victories emerge, from attracting pioneering figures to UNIA to launching ambitious initiatives like the Booker T. Washington University. But the journey is far from smooth. Garvey's marriage to his secretary, Jacques, brings both joy and turmoil, while internal strife threatens to tear Unia apart. Amidst allegations of assassination and betrayal, Garvey fights to defend his vision against formidable opposition. In January 1922, Marcus Garvey found himself entangled in legal woes as he faced charges of mail fraud. The accusations stemmed from his advertisement of stocks for a ship called the Orion, a vessel not yet in possession of the Black Star Line. Despite being granted bail of 2500 Garvey's troubles were far from over. Behind the scenes, J. Edgar Hoover and the Bureau of Investigation, BOI, were determined to secure a conviction. Fueling their efforts were grievances from a handful of Black Star Line shareholders, urging authorities to pursue the case vigorously. Garvey, however, refused to go down without a fight. Rather than directing blame solely at the state, he pointed fingers at rival African-American factions, including disgruntled former members of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA. In a fiery address at Liberty Hall, Garvey hinted at a broader conspiracy, suggesting that even the NAACP might be implicated in his legal troubles. However, the mainstream media wasted no time in painting Garvey as a deceitful figure, portraying him as a swindler who had preyed upon African-American investors. As the accusations flew, Garvey found himself thrust into the spotlight of public scrutiny, facing a battle not just in the courtroom but also in the court of public opinion. In June 1922, Garvey embarked on a controversial meeting with Edward Young Clark, serving as the Imperial Wizard Pro Tempore of the Ku Klux Klan KKK, at the Klan's headquarters in Atlanta. Leading up to this encounter, Garvey delivered impassioned speeches that steered controversy, even expressing gratitude to whites for upholding Jim Crow laws. I hold the belief that, in the context of the black struggle against social, economic, and political oppression, organizations like the Klan, Anglo-Saxon clubs, and white American societies exhibit a more transparent disposition compared to other ostensibly supportive white groups. My stance stems from a preference for honesty and equitable treatment of the Klan. But I maintain that every white individual, in the context of competition with blacks for social, economic, and political standing, adopts a similar stance. Let's confront these uncomfortable truths head on and strive for genuine progress. The news of Garvey's meeting with the KKK spread like wildfire, dominating the front pages of numerous African-American newspapers and igniting widespread outrage. The revelation struck a chord within the African-American community, prompting shock and indignation. Historians noted this event as a pivotal turning point in Garvey's public perception, with Grant highlighting its profound impact on his popularity. In response to the revelation, a coalition of prominent black figures including Chandler Owen, A. Philip Randolph, William Pickens, and Robert Bagnall spearheaded the Garvey Must Go campaign. Leveraging nativist sentiments, these critics emphasized Garvey's Jamaican heritage and, at times, advocated for his deportation. Tensions escalated as Garvey's detractors reported instances of intimidation and physical violence at the hands of Garvey supporters. William Pickens and others claimed to have faced threats and assaults, further exacerbating the rift within the African-American community.
A particularly chilling incident occurred when A. Philip Randolph received a grotesque package containing a severed hand, accompanied by a menacing letter from the KKK. The letter warned Randolph to cease his criticism of Garvey and align himself with the UNIA, underscoring the volatile nature of the situation. As the Garvey Must Go campaign gained momentum and divisions deepened, the fallout from Garvey's controversial alliance reverberated throughout African American society, leaving a lasting impact on the trajectory of his movement. Today, I had the opportunity to speak with Edward Young Clark, serving as the acting Imperial Wizard of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. During our two-hour conversation, Clark provided insight into the Klan's goals and principles. He emphatically denied harboring any hostility towards the Negro Improvement Association, expressing a desire for mutual understanding. Clark's perspective on America as a white-dominated nation was unequivocal. Additionally, he advocated for the notion of African Americans having their own territory in Africa. This assertion underscored the Klan's belief in racial segregation and separatism. In a surprising turn of events, Clark revealed that he had been extended an invitation to address the upcoming convention of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA. This unexpected development aimed to reassure members of the UNIA about the Klan's stance on racial issues. The prospect of a Klan representative speaking at a UNIA event raised eyebrows and stirred controversy highlighting the complexities of race relations in America during this tumultuous period. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into this intriguing development and its implications for the African-American community. In addition to the challenges faced in 1922, Marcus Garvey also experienced significant triumphs. One notable success was his recruitment of Hubert Fauntleroy Julian, the nation's first black pilot, to join the ranks of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA. Julian's aerial stunts served as a captivating spectacle, elevating the visibility of the organization and its mission. Furthermore, the UNIA achieved a milestone with the establishment of Booker T. Washington University, situated within the confines of the UNIA-operated Phyllis Wheatley Hotel on West 136th Street. This educational initiative aimed to empower African Americans through knowledge and academic pursuits, embodying Garvey's vision of self-determination and upliftment. Another significant achievement was Garvey's successful endeavor to secure a UNIA delegation to the League of Nations. This delegation, comprising five distinguished members, was tasked with representing the interests and aspirations of the black community on the global stage. Their presence in Geneva marked a pivotal moment in the UNIA's international advocacy efforts and underscored Garvey's commitment to advancing the cause of black liberation on a global scale. Amidst the tumultuous events of 1922, Marcus Garvey took a significant personal step by proposing marriage to his secretary, Jacques. Despite her acceptance, Jacques later revealed that her decision was not driven by love for Garvey, but rather by a sense of duty and obligation. Nevertheless, they were wed in Baltimore in July of that year. Following their marriage, Jacques proposed the publication of a book featuring Garvey's speeches. This proposal materialized into the release of The Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, a seminal work that captured Garvey's visionary ideas and aspirations. However, to ensure broader acceptance, certain inflammatory passages were edited out. In addition to this literary endeavor, the UNIA made strides in the realm of media by launching the Daily Negro Times. This newspaper served as a platform for disseminating news, promoting UNIA initiatives, and amplifying the voices of black communities. Together, these initiatives reflected Garvey's commitment to advancing black empowerment and fostering a sense of unity and purpose within the African diaspora. The August 1922 convention of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNI, marked a pivotal moment in its history as Marcus Garvey took bold steps to address internal discord. In a dramatic move, Garvey called for the impeachment of several senior UNIA figures, including Adrian Johnson and J.D. Gibson, citing alleged misconduct and mismanagement. 
In a bid to consolidate power and streamline decision-making, Garvey proposed a significant restructuring of the UNIA cabinet. He advocated for the cabinet to be appointed directly by him rather than elected by the organization's members. However, when Johnson, Gibson, and others refused to step down, Garvey took decisive action. In a surprising turn of events, Garvey resigned from his positions as head of the UNIA and Provisional President of Africa. This strategic maneuver was likely intended to pressure the dissenting members into resigning, thus paving the way for a reorganization of leadership within the organization. Undeterred by the challenges he faced, Garvey continued his efforts to root out perceived dissent within the UNIA ranks. He openly criticized another senior member, Reverend James Eason, and successfully engineered his expulsion from the organization. Garvey's actions at the 1922 convention underscored his determination to maintain control and uphold his vision for the UNIA's mission. Despite the internal strife, his leadership remained resolute as he navigated the complexities of organizational governance and interpersonal dynamics within the UNIA. Following the departure of Reverend James Eason from the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, Marcus Garvey wasted no time in asserting his leadership. He called upon the remaining members of the cabinet to resign, a move that was met with compliance, thus allowing Garvey to resume his role as the head of the organization. However, the aftermath of Eason's departure saw the emergence of a rival group to the UNIA, known as the Universal Negro Alliance, spearheaded by Eason himself. This development posed a new challenge to Garvey's authority and threatened to divide the black nationalist movement. Tragically, the rivalry between the UNIA and the Universal Negro Alliance took a deadly turn in January 1923 when Eason was assassinated while in New Orleans. The circumstances surrounding Eason's death fueled speculation and suspicion, with J. Edgar Hoover suspecting that senior UNIA members may have been involved in ordering the killing. Despite vehemently denying any involvement in Eason's assassination, Marcus Garvey took action to support the perpetrators. He launched a defense fund campaign to aid Eason's killers, a move that further exacerbated tensions within the African-American community and cast a shadow over Garvey's leadership. The events surrounding Eason's assassination underscored the high stakes and intense rivalries that characterized the black nationalist movement during this tumultuous period. Garvey's response to the tragedy raised questions about his commitment to nonviolence and his willingness to confront the darker aspects of his organization's activities. In the aftermath of Eason's tragic assassination, the African-American community was rocked by controversy and division. Eight prominent figures took a bold stand by publicly denouncing Marcus Garvey, labeling him as an unscrupulous demagogue who fueled distrust and animosity towards all white people among African Americans. They called upon the Attorney General to prosecute Garvey and dismantle the UNIO. Garvey's response was swift and furious. He vehemently condemned the accusations, accusing the signatories of perpetrating the greatest betrayal and wickedness against their own people. In a scathing pamphlet, Garvey launched a racially charged attack, targeting the heritage of the eight individuals, most of whom were identified as octoroons and quadroons. The conflict escalated further when W.E.E.B. Du Bois, although not among the signatories, penned a critical article about Garvey's activities in the United States. In retaliation, Garvey launched a personal attack on Du Bois, branding him as a hater of dark people and an unfortunate mulatto who lamented his African ancestry. As we reflect on the tumultuous events of history, it's imperative that we draw lessons for the present and future. The conflicts and controversies surrounding figures like Marcus Garvey remind us of the importance of unity and solidarity within our communities. Let us not be divided by differences in ideology or heritage, but instead, let us work together towards a common goal of empowerment and equality for all. This bitter feud laid bare the deep divisions within the African-American community and underscored the complexities of race relations during this turbulent era. The clash between Garvey and his detractors, fueled by accusations of betrayal and racial animosity, 
left a lasting impact on the trajectory of the black nationalist movement and the struggle for racial equality. Whether it's through advocacy, education, or community building, each of us has a role to play in shaping a more just and inclusive society. So, I urge you to take action today. Stand up against injustice, bridge divides, and amplify voices that have been marginalized. Together, we can honor the legacy of those who came before us and pave the way for a brighter, more equitable future. Did you enjoy this video? Why not try the next one on your screen? Please remember to like, share, comment, but most importantly, hit that subscribe button for more topic like this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.